I've always thought that paper was one of mankind's greatest technological achievements, particularly with what it enabled. But of course, the digital age arrived and paper was supposed to die. Now, it did have a dip, but lately it's having something of a resurgence. And this is because of the creeping bans for single-use plastic and where paper can fill that niche. Now, something like 65% of bags are made from recycled paper. But of course, there are some areas that paper can't compete in and still need another alternative. One of the worst things about paper, or rather one of the things that stands against paper, is the idea that it's such a wasteful industry, which is far from the truth. Paper and paper making has reduced its emissions to more or less net zero, including with cleaning up its water and cleaning up its waste. But it still does use a tremendous amount of material, something like two million trees a day go into making virgin paper. The first stage in virgin paper making is to drop those trees into a debarker. It's something like a great big potato peeler that strips off the bark and leaves a little bit on the tree. The tree is then washed to get rid of any residuals and it drops into a chipper which creates a mountain of sawdust that is then fed into the mill. So what we get is great big piles of wood chips and sawdust and great big piles of bark. And it's a lot of bark. And mostly what happened to that bark is it was burnt as fuel. Now when we think of a plastic product, we think of it as being 100% plastic. You know, it's on the bag, LDPE, HDPE, PVC, whatever it is. But it's extremely rare for it to be 100% plastic. Actually, just about all of them contain fillers in the range of 40 to 70% of the material can be filler material. And somewhere between one and 5% is the color that they add. The filler material isn't just there to fill it out, although it does reduce the cost. It will also change the mechanical properties. It can make it more durable. It can make it tougher. It can make it scuff resistant. It can make it more heat resistant. So fillers are put into plastics at a surprising amount to improve the properties of plastics, as well as bulk them out and reduce the cost. And there are four favorites. The first one is calcium carbonate, which is that white powder powder that's often used to give it a nice clear white cut for it to be able to colour later. Then they use magnesium silicate, which we know as talcum powder. Barium sulphate is very often used, as is sodium sulphate, which is more clear than barium sulphate. And sodium sulphate is used in things like plastic bags. Even a transparent plastic bag can be something like 15 to 40 percent of filler material. So Filler materials are put into plastics all of the time. And of course, I bet you can see where I'm going with this. We have all of this plastic that we already use filler materials for, and we have bark, a lot of it. Now, it's a UK-based startup called BPAX who have taken this idea and are running with it, and they've just received $522,000 in seed funding, which is Pretty impressive, really. Of course, they're keeping what they're doing pretty close to their chest, but in their advertising materials, they talk about it being 75% waste material. So my guess is 75% of this plastic that they've produced is made up of bark from the paper industry. Now, they're targeting single-use plastics, things like packaging and cups, because something like 400 million tonnes of single-use plastic will be produced this year alone, and of that, only about 9% will be recycled. The West will go into landfill. And the reason to use bark? Well, something really interesting happens when you use bark as a plastic. It becomes biodegradable. It's also antibiotic, and when it biodegrades, it releases nutrients into the soil, and it'll do that within a month or two, so you could compost it in your home compost bin and it would do your soil good. Now where bee packs have been really clever is that their bark-based plastic can be used in existing machinery. That's actually super important. It's called the legacy effect. When you have a whole load of an industry that's invested billions of dollars in the machinery and they have to change that, 
it obviously creates a huge amount of resistance, but BPAX plastic will go into existing thermoform and injection moulding machinery without the need to change it, and that will make adoption of it very much more likely than if you had to retool in an entire industrial sector. So aiming at that is really clever thinking and it's a really innovative idea to do it that way because that way will bring change that much nearer. So a very exciting development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.